Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel, Dr. Akif Beg. Today we'll be talking about what are the theories behind cyanotic spells. So cyanotic spells are usually seen in patients of tetralogy of fallow, where the usually the infants will manifest the symptoms usually manifest between three to twenty-four months of age. And typical spell is characterized by progressive increase in rate and depth of inspiration. So there uh, usually after three months, what happens is. Uh, 3 to 24 months of age, basically the pulmonary stenosis part of thing which starts getting more and more uh, aggravating. So which leads to what happens is uh, the if there is more pulmonary stenosis, more blood will start going from the right ventricle to the left ventricle. So then there is mixture of those mixture of those blood and this leading to cyanosis. So typical spell is usually characterized by progressive increase in rate and depth of inspiration. The child, what will the child will do is, child will start taking uh, more. The rate of respiration as well as the depth of inspiration will uh, will increase. Also, the sinuses will be increased. The bluish discoloration of the face and uh, the uh, peripheries as well as lips and central part will increase. So sometimes if the sinuses continues and it if it stays for a long time, this may lead to uh, hypoxia and hypoxia related uh, convulsions and cerebrovascular accident and death as a complications in child. The spells are usually less common after two years of age uh, because why what we thought about is the theory behind is that so all these spells usually occurs because of the uh, immature respiratory center. So uh, hyper responsiveness of the respiratory centers because of various uh, theories which actually leads to these spells. So after two years, the maturity of this respiratory center occurs and uh, the respiratory centers behave more maturely to the hypoxia after two years of age. And thus there is cyanotic spell starts decreasing after this age. So what are the cyanotic spells? Uh, various mechanism is that it's all these things starts from uh, systemic desaturation. So first thing what is important for the cyanotic spells to occur is there should be increased right to left shin. So how it occurs is basically because uh, if there is pulmonary stenosis, pulmonary valve stenosis, so right ventricular outflow tract is obstructed. So the all the blood of the right ventricle, that is the deoxygenated blood of the right ventricle, if it has to go to the left ventricle, it is only has to go through the VSD, the ventricle septal defect, and thus the deoxygenated blood get mixed with the oxygenated blood, and thus leading to what is called as increased systemic desaturation. And when there is desaturation, it leads to hypoxia, and hypoxia and product leads to acidosis. So you can see hypoxia, increased CO2 and acidosis, decrease of pH. So all these things will go and induce the respiratory center. In children, when uh, they are below two years of age, the respiratory center is very much immature. So it start uh, responding to this response, uh, this uh, hypoxia and acidosis in form of increased hypernia. That is, increased uh, breathing depth as well as rate of uh, breathing has been increased. And thus it leads to what happens is increased cardiac rate, increased cardiac rate, the rate of heart increases. And this, if, if the heart rate increases, the cardiac output also increases. And also because of this deep inspiration and the deep breathing as well, th there is increase in venous return to the right side of the heart. When there is more right side of the heart blood is coming, the, there is more mixing of the right uh, ventricle and left ventricle blood because the RVOT obstruction has in increased. And thus it goes as a cycle and there is more right to left side and again this spells keeps continuing. So what are the theories behind it is that first theory is the Woods theory, which is which says that hypoxic spells are basically caused by the spasm of the infundibulum of the right ventricle. So this infundibulum is usually present at the right ventricular outflow tract. And when there is spasm of this infundibulum, the right ventricular outflow tract, uh, there is a stenosis occurs. So the blood cannot go from the right ventricular to the to out to, through the pulmonary valve. And thus what happens is all this blood has to go to the left side of the ventricle and thus leading to like mixture, uh, admixture of this blood and thus leading to systemic desaturation and all this cycle continues. So increasing right to left and acidosis and acidosis leads to as we have already discussed uh, acidosis leads to hypernia and again this cycle keeps continuing. Second is catecholamine release. The second theory is the catecholamine release. So what happens is if there is because of this hypoxia and the stress condition, what is happening is there is increase in catecholamine release which occurs. And whenever there is catecholamine release, what does it do? It increases the myocardial contractility and that increases the oxygen demand as well as this contractility leads to more infundibular stenosis. That is the right ventricular stenosis gets more and more and thus leading to tetralogy of fallow. So the others catecholamine release leads to increase myocardial contractility and more infundibular stenosis. There is more RVOT obstruction. Third theory is the Gunteroth theory, which is the episode of paroxysmal hypernia. So what does the Gunteroth says that key in children, uh, uh, as we have already we have as we have learned that this hypoxia leads to hypernia. What does Gunteroth says is reverse. It says reverse of that that it says that because of the increased hypernia, so the children will start breathing more and more deeper. 
more and more deeper and thus leads to hypernia there is increased uh, because of that there is increased systemic venous return because of the increased depth of inspiration and thus leading to increased right sided uh, heart rate right sided uh, feeling and thus there is more right to left shunt it's called as gunther's theory next is kothari's theory which says that the stimulation of the mechanical receptors in the right ventricle uh, can release the cause of the spell so mechanical receptors in the right ventricle is the cause of the spell is as per the what is called as uh, the stimulation of the mechanical receptors in the right ventricle leading to the spells kothari's theory next is the young's theory young's theory says that uh, this spell is usually occur because of the uh, presence of atrial tachycardia so atrial tachycardia leading to arrhythmia and thus uh, this leading to the synoptic spell is one of the theories said by young's theory so overall there are five theories there is young's theory morgan's theory kothari's theory so morgan's theory is that uh, vulnerable respiratory center so as we have already said you that the respiratory centers are very much immature they are vulnerable to uh, any stimulus like hypoxic stimulus like crying and feeding and thus uh, usually the baby has been seen to be coloring color changes to blue when they cry or during the feeding time because of the vulnerable respiratory center so this is what is called as morgan's theory Hope you have liked this video. If you want more video like this, do subscribe to my YouTube channel, Dr. Akif Bey. Thank you.